What's up, you legend? As you know, I just finished driving 7,000 kilometers literally all around Mexico and had the time of my life exploring this magical country. For the longest of time, my adventurous explorers have been asking me to make videos about the top places I visit in a country or the most hidden gems I discover. But my issue with this was the fact that for me, traveling is this really spontaneous and adventurous thing where I basically discover things I didn't even know existed and, and you know, go off the beaten track as much as I can. That being said, when I do my minimal travel planning, I do use other people's resources. And that is why I finally decided to make my coolest places to visit video that I hope to continue everywhere I go. One quick thing before we start though, if you start watching this video hoping that I will talk about places like Catedral de Mexico or Cancun or places like this, you can stop watching right this second because eh, they're not here. However, if you want to see the really cool stuff Mexico has to offer, you're certainly at the right place. Number 17 is a cenote with a really mysterious name, the Pet Cemetery. You see, when they initially explored the cenote, a team of divers came upon a truly marvelous discovery. The cave's jaw-dropping rock formations were punctuated by stalactites and stalagmites with pockets of darkness in which cave-blind fish flourish. Most staggering of all, the bottom of the pool had a soft dune-like surface which, when shifted, revealed unforeseen treasures. The pit was littered with animal bones ranging from ancient to more familiar, including the fossilized remains of an extinct prehistoric camel. It's thought that in the old days, the indigenous people tossed the remains of their dead animals into these caves for some sacrificial or burial reasons. Thus, this not got its name of Pet Cemetery, and even these days, it's filled with bats, blind fish, and, of course, tarantulas. Sonata Pet Cemetery is only 25 kilometers away from Tulum City and 60 kilometers away from Playa del Carmen. The place is certainly not too difficult to find, however, you do need a mode of transport to get there and you'll have to spend quite a bit of time driving on a dirt road. So be ready for a few bumps here and there. The upside is, uh, you'll get to see lizards on the way, eh? The tour price will not include a, a swimsuit and at the, at the entrance they will ask whether you want to rent it or not. We thought that the Sonata water would have to be quite warm so we went inside without it and <laughs> we were shivering literally all the time. I mean it was so cold that I even couldn't last the whole tour and left like 20 minutes early or some. Place to visit number 16 on my list is San Miguel de Allende. San Miguel played a major role in Mexico's War of Independence in the 19th century. It is the birthplace of some of the most important figures of the war, as well as the very first town in all of Mexico to gain its independence from Spain. The city is also very popular for its mariachis, who play there non-stop. Funnily enough, at the time of our visit, one guy decided to go a step further and actually propose to his girlfriend while the mariachis were singing. What a legend! San Miguel de Allende is located in the state of Guanajuato, just under 300 kilometers away from Mexico City and less than 100 kilometers away from Guanajuato City. It's easily reachable by car, but I'm sure you won't have any trouble finding a bus too. San Miguel de Allende is incredibly popular among expats and tourists, so it doesn't matter what time you go there, it'll always be packed. My best tip is to wake up very early in the morning, just before the sunrise, um, because then everyone will still be sleeping from their beautiful nights out. <laughs> And I'm sure you have a lot of fun, because the views, the views, oh, the views are great. My 15th choice is a place of incredible history and power, Fort Veracruz. It is a structure built by the early Spanish who came in their shining armor to conquer the new world. It said that more silver and gold has been collected, stored, and shipped from Veracruz and the fortress than any other place in the new world. This fort took nearly 50 years to complete and claimed the lives of thousands of indigenous slaves, as well as thousands of tons of coral reef that was destroyed to build the walls of this fortress. Later on, the fortress served as a battleground, a prison, and even a presidential palace. These days, it's a famous museum among many travelers who pass by and certainly a great place to visit. The fortress is called San Juan de Ulua in Spanish and is located in the port zone of Veracruz City, known as Heroica Veracruz. The place number 14 is Las Coloradas. It's a group of huge pink salt lakes in the Rio Lagartos Biosphere Reserve, a protected wetlands area home to animals like flamingos, crocodiles, sea turtles, jaguars, and all kinds of seabirds. Las Coloradas means the red ones in Spanish, which is an incredibly appropriate name for this place. These lakes produce thousands of tons of salt per year, which is a great source of income for the local people that makes them less dependent on fishing. The lakes are a really cool spot to visit not only because they look very spectacular, but also because you get to see hundreds of wild flamingos chilling in them. 
This was the first time I ever saw wild flamingos in my life and uh, it was amazing. Las Coloradas was one of the coolest places we visited in Yucatan, but it's certainly not too easy to get there. It's around 230 kilometers away from Merida and almost 300 kilometers away from Cancun, reachable by relatively small country roads. I'm pretty sure no buses go there except for special tourist group buses, so I guess you either need to get your own car or join someone who has a car or book some sort of a tour that will get you there. When you come to Las Coloradas, you will be asked to pay an entrance fee that also includes a local guide without whom you cannot actually enter the place. So please don't start talking about how much you do not need a guide and how much you don't like having guides and stuff and, and support the local people. They certainly, you know, don't live their lives in luxury and, and I mean, the entrance ticket is cheap. My choice number 13 goes to the tiny town of Tlacotalpan, a UNESCO World Heritage Site famous for its gorgeous architecture and colonial era layout. There might not be large shopping malls or cinemas or zoos or amusement parks in this town, but what it does have is the feature of a time machine. I promise you this place will take you hundreds of years back in time to the 16th or the 7th centuries when it was built and flourished. The town features multiple cute bars and restaurants, churches, gorges, lanes, parks, and an overwhelming amount of calm, idyllic life. Tlacotalpan is located in the state of Veracruz, only 100 kilometers away from its capital, Heroica Veracruz, and just over 500 kilometers away from Mexico City. We had a car going there, but I'm sure you can find other transportation options too. Veracruz certainly ain't no jungle. Go to the main square of Tlacotalpan in the evenings when hundreds of birds come there to chill on the trees and sing so loud It'll make you think they were using loudspeakers. That was certainly one of the weirdest and coolest things we saw during our Mexico road trip and I'm absolutely certain you will love it too. Number 12 is my boy Teotihuacan. I know, I know, I know, I know. Most people would probably have this place at the very top of the list, but it was just so touristy, I couldn't. And also number 12 ain't necessarily that bad considering we don't even have Chichen Itza in the list at all. Teotihuacan, the most famous archeological site in all of Mexico that receives millions of tourists every year. Teotihuacan is an ancient Mesoamerican city where the Aztecs believed their gods were born. Over 1000 years ago, Teotihuacan was the largest city in the pre-Columbian Americas with a population estimated 125,000 people or more, making it at least the sixth largest city in the world during that time. Not much is known about the mysterious past of Teotihuacan, but it's clear that this place held enormous political significance for the civilizations of those times and was also a place of religious ceremonies during which animals and people were sacrificed after they ceremoniously crossed this avenue of the dead. Teotihuacan is just 50 kilometers away from central Mexico City and if there is a place that's really easy to get to in our list, that's certainly this place. As convenient as it is to get there, uh, the downside of course is the fact that everyone comes there. Uh, so get ready for massive crowds of tourists and you might also have to wait in line to get to the very top of the Pyramid of the Sun. Uh, <laughs> so get ready for that, the views are certainly going to be great, uh, trust me. Place number 11 on my list is this urban paradise called Sanate Zati. The Yucatan Peninsula has as many as 6,000 cenotes, which are water-filled sinkholes. But this one is the only one located in the midst of a largely urban surround. It's not just an urban surround, it's literally inside the city center. I mean, imagine Oxford Street in London or the Times Square in New York. Uh, it's crazy. This place might not be as picturesque as some of the other cenotes, but it's certainly one of the best to go swimming at since it's so cheap, accessible and hardly ever busy with people. As I mentioned already, Sanate Zati is located literally in the city center of Valladolid. But it's also not too far from more popular cities in the area. 150 kilometers away from Cancun, 140 kilometers away from Playa del Carmen, and only 100 kilometers away from Tulum. The single is filled with tons of eyeless black fish that will nibble at your feet if you let them. So if you're a fan of the uh, fish bath, you'll certainly enjoy your time at the Sonata Zeitz. We just got into Jacob's top 10 places uh, to visit in Mexico. Welcome, welcome, welcome you legend. Place number 10 is Sumidero Canyon. The canyon's creation began around the same time as the Grand Canyon in the United States by a crack in the area's crust and subsequent erosion by the Grijalva River, which still runs through it. Sumidero Canyon has vertical walls which reach as high as 1,000 meters and look out of this world beautiful. When you take a car to the Sumidero Canyon, you drive up a mountain and then make your way to the very end of the road, visiting multiple viewpoints along the way and then drive all the way back. I know you can also take a boat tour to sail you up the river across the whole canyon, but unfortunately we didn't get the chance to do it ourselves. 
Though I'm sure that would have been great. Sumidero Canyon is located just outside the capital of Chiapas, Tuxtla Gutierrez. Taking a car there is incredibly easy, but I know that pretty much every hotel or hostel in town can also sell you a tour if you are keen. We also saw some people simply walking up the mountain and then walking all the way down. And so if you have a lot of time, that could also be a pretty good option. At some point, uh, most of the viewpoints felt kind of similar and we didn't want to go to the very very end to the very last viewpoint however we did and that almost had the best views uh, so make sure you go to the very end check it out and then go chill number nine goes to Palenque one of the most important cities of the Maya world that flourished big time in the 7th century. Palenque was first inhabited around 100 BC and it was the westernmost city-state in the Maya world. It wasn't the largest of their cities, but it contained some of the finest architecture, sculpture, roof comb, and bas-relief carvings the Maya ever produced. Even though Palenque is by far the most well-researched of all the Maya cities, it is estimated that less than 10% of the total area of the city is explored, leaving more than a thousand sculptures still covered by the dense jungle. Palenque is located in the state of Chiapas, relatively far away from any of its bigger cities. Its capital, Texla Gutierrez, is almost 300 kilometers away, though the capital of Tabasco State, Villa Hermosa, is a little more accessible, only 150 kilometers away. That being said, Palenque is one of the most visited ancient ruins in all of Mexico, so I'm absolutely certain there's a lot of transportation options. My best tip is to get there early. You see, we got there just an hour or two before the place would close, and so we spent our time exploring, and then a really big jungle rainstorm was approaching, so we really wanted to experience it there. But the security guards approached us and said we had to leave because apparently the place is closing, which was super disappointing. Well, I guess, I guess you live and learn, eh? Number eight goes to Crater Hoya Honda, which was the northernmost point of our trip in Mexico. This crater is 800 meters wide and 200 meters deep, and has been the source of legends and mystery for generations. According to legend, the crater has not only housed bandits and their treasures, but is also a place where witches can be sighted some nights and where UFOs tend to land from time to time. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see no witches or UFOs, but, but I had a great time uh, exploring the place nonetheless. You can also go hiking at the bottom of the crater, which unfortunately we didn't get to do. But if you ever have the chance, let me know how it went. Let the fun part begin. This crater is only 50 kilometers away from a relatively big city called San Luis Potosi, but it felt so remote and quite hard to get to. At that point on our trip, we had already taken some really remote roads, but this was something on another level. We had to ask tons of locals to point us to the right direction yeah, then cross this okay. vast expanse that we had all to ourselves and somehow find the way to the crater, which certainly didn't have proper signs pointing to it. But it was so much fun, it was all worth it. Obviously the best tip is that it certainly isn't easy to get to this place, so uh, sharpen up your Spanish and get ready to have some epic interactions with the local people. Um, you'll find it eventually, don't worry, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Place number seven goes to the most high-ranking cenote on my list, Cenote Suitun. This cenote is probably one of the most popular cenotes in all of Yucatan, but it has one incredible thing going for it. The absolutely insane look and the light that shines through the very top. When we came in, the cenote had a traditional performance and was completely packed with people. We really did admire the views, but the place certainly didn't have that magical feeling you'd expect. But then, all of a sudden, it all changed. Almost everyone left and we were there with just a few other backpackers. It was amazing! Cenote Suitun is located just 10 kilometers away from Valladolid, Mexico's capital of legendary cenotes. You can easily get there with a car or a tourist bus. However, know that if you go there with a tourist bus, there will obviously be a lot of people coming with you on the same bus and by the time you need to leave, you will have to leave with them. Right, so you you probably won't experience something that we did when we just came with the car, but there's upsides and downsides. The performance, of course, looked absolutely wonderful, but they do those performances at the most popular times when most people come to the place. So I would probably recommend uh, not going to a performance because then the place will be a lot more calm and serene, which I think is probably better than seeing a performance with a million people there. But it's your call, it's your call. Number six is this wonderful uh, mineral pool place called Hierve el Agua. Hierve el Agua is a set of natural rock formations that resemble cascades of water. The site consists of two rock cliffs which rise between 50 and 90 meters from the valley below and obviously look absolutely spectacular. At the top of Hierve el Agua, there are also a dozen or so water pools that you can jump in and swim. And they're much better than any infinity pool you've ever been to, trust me. 
Erva Lago is located in the state of Oaxaca, just 70 kilometers away from Oaxaca City. Even though that doesn't sound like a lot, the roads leading to it are certainly not the best and thus it takes up to two hours to drive the distance. But you'll get to see gorgeous mountain views and, and super tiny cool villages on the way, so it ain't all that bad. We only spent 10 to 15 minutes bathing in those pools, but it was so cool, we were literally shivering. Um, so maybe take a towel or some or go there on a sunny day, I don't know. Just get ready for, for some cold water. Finally, the top five, welcome, welcome, welcome. Number five goes to the mountain village of Benito Juarez. Benito Juarez is a picturesque village that makes up part of a conglomerate of villages known as the jointly responsible villages who are working to assure sustainable logging and supplement their income by providing ecotourism facilities. When you get to the village, you can drive up to this incredible viewpoint that has a very long hanging bridge that doesn't look real at all. When I went there, the whole area was surrounded by clouds which got dyed in these wonderful pink and purple colors just as the sun was setting. Absolutely magnificent. Benito Juarez is only 60 kilometers away from Oaxaca City, but the roads are unpaved and incredibly windy, going up a hill, which means it takes about two hours to get there. But if you're not the biggest fan of boring highways, you'll love that ride, trust me. My choice number four is the island of Holbox. Holbox is one of the most remote and well-preserved islands in Mexico. It's just over 40 kilometers long and is separated from the mainland by 10 kilometers of shallow lagoon that is home to flamingos, pelicans, and other rich bird life. Most of the people of Holbox still make their living fishing. The streets are made of white sand common of Caribbean islands, and there are very few cars as most people commute with golf carts or bicycles. In spite of the island's natural beauty, inaccessibility has left it uh, relatively unspoiled by mass tourism, which will make you incredibly happy. The island has tons of gorgeous beaches, cheap massages, a town center with quite a few good restaurants, and a great sunset point, where you can also chill on a hammock. Holbox is really complicated to get to. If you have a car, you'll have to drive 140 kilometers away from Cancun to this tiny town called Chiquila. Then park the car there and hop on a ferry going to Holbox. The ferries run every 30 minutes or sometimes every one hour, depending on the time of the day. Since Holbox is still relatively untouched by civilization, they have billions of super aggressive mosquitoes ready to dine on you. So certainly bring uh, some uh, mosquito repellent or, or, or a hat or I don't know, something to protect yourself as you definitely do not want to end up in a situation my boy Andrukas ended up in. Check it out. My boy just broke his bike. <laughs> now he has to run because if he stops, he's, he's done. That's the worst thing together. Top three, a welcome and I have to say it is getting hot in the studio, no? <laughs> my choice number three is Las Posas. Las Posas is an extraordinary surrealist sculpture garden situated in the mountains of Mexico. It was created by this eccentric English poet called Edward James, who wanted to build a garden of Eden on earth. By the time James died in 1984, he had spent over $5 million for the construction of Las Posas and had built 36 surrealist inspired concrete sculptures spread out over more than 20 acres of tropical jungle. Walking around Las Posas, we somehow forgot we were on planet Earth. It felt more like Narnia or the Lord of the Rings. I don't know, I mean, look at this place. Las Posas is located just outside of this beautiful mountain town called Gilitla. It certainly takes a long while to get to the town as it's almost 500 kilometers away from Mexico City and a lot of the roads leading to it are small mountain roads that cross many towns and villages on the way. So your average speed certainly isn't the fastest. My best tip is bring a swimsuit to Las Posas because they have a couple of waterfalls there where you can actually bathe in. I didn't have my swim shorts there and I certainly wasn't too happy about it. Number two is is hashtag suspense is <laughs> the black hole of mexico the cave of swallows is a huge open air pit cave also known to be the second deepest pit in mexico and the largest known cave shaft in the world every evening a large flock of birds circle the mouth of the cave and about once each minute a group of perhaps 50 breaks off and heads straight down towards the opening when they cross the edge the birds pull in their wings and free fall extending their wings and pulling out of the dive when they reach the heights of their nest. This is an absolutely incredible thing to experience. Trust me, 
Cave of Swallows is located just 60 kilometers away from the town of Hilitla, I just mentioned. But bear in mind that the roads are absolutely terrible. It will take you well over two hours to get there, so take some snacks and get ready to cross a million holes on the way. It'll be worth it though. This tip will certainly save you some money. Do not fly a drone at that place. We didn't know this rule, so we, we, we started flying our drone. Got one insane shot, uh, this one, and then some locals saw us uh, flying the drone, and it became the biggest thing. The whole village started discussing what they should do with us, and, and some policemen or local guards or whatever came on their motorcycles with, with radios, and eventually we had to pay a, a fine of $45, um, which isn't too crazy. Um, though it's quite a bit of money in Mexico, I guess. So we were, of course, really happy that we could support the local community. But, you know, be careful with these things. Uh, and they say the reason you cannot really fly a drone there um, is because you might potentially hurt the birds. So we're really sorry we did it. Uh, we paid our fine, so I guess we're even now, no? Um, but yes, yes, uh, be careful. And finally, my most favorite place in all of Mexico, the legendary Tamu Waterfall. Oh, <laughs> that's it. This insane, 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 insane place, you're gonna love it. Check it out. Famed for its turquoise water, Tamul Waterfall is the result of two rivers merging, which create this magnificent 300 meter wide and over 100 meter high waterfall. Not only is it one of the largest, but certainly one of the most beautiful waterfalls Mexico has to offer. And honestly, if I ever made a list of my top waterfalls in the world, which might be a good idea. <laughs> this would definitely be one of the top ones. You can admire millions of tons of water cascading down 100 meters when you're at the bottom of the waterfall and also see the whole thing from up above. Both views will certainly take your breath away. Most importantly, when we were there, we encountered absolutely no tourists. And even though I know that, you know, putting this waterfall in a video like this might potentially change the situation, um, you know, but I guess really, really good things are meant to be shared. So, so go see the waterfall um, as soon as you have the chance. Tamul Waterfall is located not too far from the city of Ciudad Valles in the province of San Luis Potosi. However, the roads leading up to it are terrible. I mean, they're beautiful, but terrible. <laughs> when you get to the end of the road, you will have to park your car under a tree, then hop into a big boat, go to the other side of the river, and then walk for another 20 to 30 minutes to get to the top of the waterfall, and the same to get to the bottom. But that's exactly what makes a place non-touristy, because it's hard to get to. I really, really, really hope uh, that never changes. Please uh, never make a concrete road there. Please, uh, please. My best tip is of course, plan as much time as you can for this place. And once you're there, do not rush. Go to the very bottom of the waterfall and just sit there, admiring the view, playing cards, or doing whatever else. Then go back to the very top and do the same for as long as you can. I'm sure you'll enjoy every second of it. This place is definitely worth your time. And also when we were there, we had very little service on our phones, which once again was great because you can finally put the phone down or uh, ideally toss it into the river <laughs> and simply take everything in. Trust me, your time at Tamil will, will definitely be a lot of fun. So that is it. This is the end of the very, very list. And if you are a person who watched everything from the very, very beginning of the video to the very end, you are a bloody legend. I would like to hug you a million times and give you five million uh, high fives. <laughs> if you liked the video, of course, uh, smash the like button. Do not forget to uh, turn on the notifications on all of my videos. And most importantly, whatever happens, always stay curious.